All right. Yeah, that's for next time. Anyway, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing a couple questions on gear trains uh, and some different cases of gear trains. And the first question we're going to do is this one right here. So it'll be this. Let me pull out Epic Pin. So it'll be this. And so these will be very typical to how you do uh, normal questions. They will kind of be like that. But we're going to walk through the first one. So the first one is going to be walked through in like a paragraph. And I'm going to continuously show you as we move through it how they're adding to that table. You know, the one that I introduced earlier that looks like that. We're going to we're going to very quickly show how they do it and how you're going to do the next question. So to start off here, this is the beginning part, although I've skipped down because, you know, I can't control my mouse. So uh, starting here. So it says many gear trains employ arrangements in which some gear spin in which some gears spin about rotating axis. Figure 9 shows a gear train containing one such arrangement. And figure 9 is, uh, although I don't, I feel like there's just way many, there's so many mistakes in this thing. But I think figure 9 is probably above. And it says, before analyzing the gear train, let us examine the rolling contact equation for two gears in contact with rotating lines of center shown in figure 18. So figure 18 is this right here. So this one, if you remember from our rolling contact equations in, in the previous chapters, this one right here uh, had something like, uh, here, let me, I think it was something like rho 2 times delta theta 2 minus delta theta c, right? You remember that sort of equation? This one had that one? Yeah. Cool. Yep. So... Basically, what that means is, is that we are using this rolling contact equation again, but only we are changing it to include these W's and these N's, right? Because remember yesterday, we, we made the connection that you can replace uh, radiuses with gear teeth, right? So we're going to do that. So the first part right here, it says, uh, as, with the ch as we saw in Chapter 2, the rolling contact equation for gears, uh, for Equation for the gears can be written in terms of radii of the pitch circles as follows. So this is the one that you remember, right? And then we have transformed it because, if you recall, what is delta theta 2? Delta theta 2 is essentially just the velocity of 2, right? It's the change in angle. It's the angular velocity, right? Because it's one angle starting here, another angle starting here. Whatever the difference is, is how fast it's moving, correct? With respect to time. So we were able to put that right here. And we also put the uh, omega c here as well. So we have this entered and this entered, right? And likewise, we did the same thing for omega 3 and omega c, right? Does that make sense? Hopefully. Yep. Cool. So it says, in terms of the number of gear teeth and solving for the output angular speed, we have. So what they did was, now they've replaced the R's. Because if you recall, the R's could be replaced with the number of gear teeth. And N is equal to number of gear teeth. Right? If you can manage to read that. I'm sure Victoria's niece could write better. So, <laughs> right here... We have replaced it. And so we have that exact same equation, except with the gear teeth in it, right? And then we have solved that equation, the previous one, for omega-3, right? So just if you maneuver this around, you will get this equation. So if you did, you know, f distributed this out and moved it around, you get omega-3 in terms of omega-2 and omega-C. And so here in a second, we're going to show you how that works for how we do this chapter. So let me go ahead and get rid of this stuff up here. But remember this format. This format is extremely uh, 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 popular. It always shows up. And it basically also this as well, because that's how we get a lot of these from this sort of relationship. They don't do it in front of you. They just assume you know that this is where it comes from, right? Just a using rolling contact equations, which we've been doing to some degree. So like I said, this is the question we'll be doing right here. 
And so, how many gears does this have? Does anybody like to take a shot at that? Five. So we have one Five, here, two, two yeah. three, or six maybe. Four and five, but this right here is the arm. So we're going to talk about an arm here in a second. But yes, there are five gears for this one. And like I said, we did the last time, gears are kind of represented from the side view as little rectangles, right? Because if you look at a circle from the side, you will see a rectangle, or well, square rectangle, depending on what it is, but it'll look like a four-sided figure. So let's move down. So it says, uh, note that the first term is the relative angular speed between the input and the arm. So if we go back up here, uh, right here, they're talking about this term. So relative angular speed. So essentially, if we take W2 minus WC, they have replaced it with WRAR, uh, WAR. So essentially, they've replaced it as that because essentially this term right here is just, let me go, let me get rid of this arrow. That term, so remember this, that term right there is just essentially W2R because it is the relative angular speed of the arm. So essentially it is how fast one is moving with respect to the other, right? And so instead of writing this difference, which is this is a, like if you're, if you're saying, you know, W2 minus W1, that is the relative speed of each other. So if I'm moving 25 miles an hour and Matt is moving 20, our relative speed is five, right? So that is what this is. More or less, it is that. So W2 minus WC is right here, relative speed. And they've replaced it with W2R because W2R is our input, right? So we W2R, or our, our W2 is our input. So this right here is the input of two with respect to the arm. So you need to understand this term, right? Oh my God. How did we manage that? That term right there. That is the uh, input velocity relative to the arm. arm. Let's try that. So input velocity relative to the arm. So moving on here. So it says, uh, and right here it says where W2R is the relative angular speed of the input with respect to the arm, which is what I just said. Thus, we can see equation of view 32 as consisting of gear analysis while the arm is held fixed. So where is this? Equation 32. Yes. So the way that we do these questions is that you start with the first case. The first case is you hold the arm fixed and you do the analysis as the gears, as each arm is fixed, or the, the arm, the, the big arm. Then you do the next one where the gears are fixed and the arms are moving. And then the third one is the tabulation, so the addition of those two together. And you'll, this will make a little more sense in a second. And then it says, uh, do, 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 and the addition of the arm's regular speed, angular speed. This is the basis of tabular method of gear train analysis. So it says, focusing now on the gear train in figure 17, which is right here. Right? So I actually have a picture of this, but uh, it's right here. But I, I could try and show it on the screen maybe while we're doing this. I don't think it'll work though, but we'll try as we're moving down the page. Eh. All right, cool. Let's get rid of Epic Pen. All right, so that's the picture we're talking about as we go down the page. So it says, focusing now on the gear train in figure 17, we form table one as follows. In the heading of the table, list the gears in order of their meshing. So right here, as you can see, I've done that, gears, arms fixed, gear, so these are the conditions, right? Arms fixed, gears locks, and arm rotates, and then the total of them. And going across the columns, we have gear two, three, four, five, six, and the arm. So that is how you should set up every one of these questions, right? Just make a table like that. So this 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 homework should be really easy to make 
uh, for us, right? Because you just have to fill in like I did up here. Although I took a picture of that, but I actually have it here, a blank one for our next question. So, all right. And it says, in the heading of the table is the gears order of meshing. Gears two and three are on the same shaft. And then it says, gear three has external mesh with gears four, gear four. Gears four and five are on the same shaft. Gears five and six are an external mesh, and finally the arm. So what they are talking about is right here. So they said gears two and three, which is here and here. They are on the this shaft right here in the middle. You see that? So what that means is, is that what is their speed? Does anybody want to take a shot at that? Yeah, get out of here. They are the same? They are the same, correct. So therefore, that makes our first part of that table fairly easy, right? Essentially, we know that this is the same speed as that. And now here, these two are meshing together. So that's where that equation, you remember the one I said that it follows in that same category every time? You, like, you use that same equation. This is where those start. If they're the same on the same shaft, you don't have to use it. This one, though, when they start to mesh, you do. So we'll get to that in a second. And then it says 4 and 5 are also on the same shaft here. So therefore, theirs are the same. And then 5 and 6 have external meshing, which I have shown right here through this really crappy line. So you can draw better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I have a problem with straight lines. Everybody knows that. So right here. Let me look. So where are we at? We're right here. So it says in the, fir in the row, first row, we do not allow the arm to rotate. So what that means is this is that first condition I was talking about up here. Let me get rid of this. That first condition, it says arms fixed, which means that the arm is not rotating at all. So that is our first condition. And that is the first thing we go through when we start this. So let me go back down to the picture. So we recognize that all angular speeds must be relative to the arm as a result and add the subscript R to highlight this fact. So your first table should have a lot of R's in it or in other ones. Uh, so it should be gear two R, which means it's gear two relative to the arm. Or uh, I know in other questions, it's gear A, B, C, D. So it should be gear A with respect to the arm. So uh, gear, or it should be W, A, R, right? So just be aware of that the changing of it and it says start with input gear two and its angular speed so the angular speed of input gear two or this gear right here is what isn't it omega two yeah just um, but since remember we're doing this with respect to the arm which means it is omega two two r r because it's with respect to the arm now you'd be right though omega two is right here at the very end and that is our s speed of the the whatever so essentially there's two types of speed right this one moves at some speed and that is omega 2 but it also moves with some speed with respect to this arm and that is a completely different speed right although if they're okay they could be the same but anyway we're, we're, that's in a very rare case but anyway so right here so we insert the symbol in the column under gear heading 2 so right up here that's what they've done they put right here, omega 2r, right? And essentially all of these columns are trying to represent this gear for its speed with respect to the initial input, right? So like all of these are trying to be, write an equation that writes it with respect to the input. So that's, that's why it looks like that. And now, as we said earlier, omega 3, or uh, gear 3, Matt, since you just said something, gear three, what is, uh, what do we put in the gear three column? Who, who did you ask to answer? Matt. Oh. Anybody else want to take a shot? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, it's the best class ever. So omega. essentially, so omega three. What do okay. we put into uh? What would we put into the column under gear three? I can't yeah. see the Discord chat. If someone's typing it. Let me know. I can't see it. Same as two. Same as two. Correct. Thank you, Zach. So 
Same as two, and that is because they are on the same shaft, right? So they have the same speed. So gear three, go up here, W2R, Omega 2R is the same. Now gear four. So gear four is this one right here, and it is coming into contact with gear three. You would agree? I hope so. So, one sec, gear three, gear four. So, for this one, we have to represent uh, represent gear four in terms of the previous like connections and the input one. So, how might we do something like that? So if you recall from that uh, equation we saw up here, that uh, types of things like this, I think this one will probably be more applicable right here. So remember, we can represent radiuses as ends. So what that means for us is, is that, remember, we're applying the rolling contact equation. This That is our goal. So if we're going to represent this connection, uh, the way it works is it's the opposite of the it's opposite of driver. Now let me go ahead and try and draw that better. Driver over driven. Right. So that is the so what would we put there in terms of gear teeth if it was driver over driven? So which gear is driving what? Anybody? Is it well? Because for you're talking about for N two or N three and M four or yes. N two N three. N three and N four. Isn't N four driving N three? It is not. It's three not. is driving it's four, because okay. N two is the input gear. So we so think about it this way: we started turning this one, it therefore turned three, and then this one starts turning four, right? So that is the so that is the driver. So therefore, what would you write here, uh, Zach, in terms of ends? Negative N3 over N4. Negative N3 over N4, right? And then in the previous equation, that was always multiplied by the speed, right? You know, the angular velocity. So what would you put here to represent uh, omega 4 in terms of the ones that previously contacted what what omega would we put here 2r 2r and why did you say that by the way because absolutely brilliant someone might have said w3 right yeah but 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 w3 is w2r it is correct so you would put opposite of n3 over n4 w2r and if you we look up here get rid of that Gear 4 is represented right here as such, right? And now everyone's seen Gear 5, if they've been paying attention, but I will ask it anyway. So Gear 5, which is uh, this right here. So we are now doing the connection between 4 and 5. So right here, at this part, uh, what does that mean if they're connected by that shaft? Same speed. Same speed. So what would you put under gear 5 to represent its angular velocity? W2R. W2R. Are you sure? But it... It's 4's yeah, it connection with 5. So what was the what was the equation we used for 4? N3 over N4 uh, times W2R. Yes. Which means, so think of it this way, is that if we go up here, think of it this way, is that N4, so gear 4 speed is the same as 5, and this is the equation we use to represent its speed. So therefore, it must be the same as 5, right? Yeah. So that's how it is. So essentially, the gears, if they're connected by a shaft, that's really easy. You just, mul you just move it right here. So our first ones have been really easy. So this is the same. And then this is the same. We've only actually had to do one, which is gear four. But now we're going to have to do another one, I'm sure. So right here, we have another external connection, which is N6 and N5, right? So let me move back down on this page just to get us back, back to where we were. Right here. 
All right, so it says since gears four and five are on the same shaft, the angular speed of five is the same as four. And it says so we preheat the formula for gear five. And it says gear six has external mesh with gear five. So multiply the negative of the ratio of driv driver gear five over the driven gear six by the angular speed of gear five. So what that means is, is that essentially we just take the equation right here and we multiply it into our other one, which would be something like this. So it would be N5, remember, because it's driver over driven, so N5 over N6. So we've represented the, uh, we've represented them like connecting here, right? Which would be uh, N5 over N6. But now we have to multiply by N5 speed, or a uh, five speed, which was this equation, which is, here, I'll put the negative sign there, I almost forgot over n4 times omega 2r, right? Does that make sense? And the reason and the reason why we've done this is is that it, it's that if you I know if you open the book it makes more sense if you read through the actual derivation of it, but essentially it's these connecting equations. It's like omega 3, it's whenever you do this, this rolling contact changes everything. So if you if you manipulate this initial rolling contact, which is essentially what this is, right? We're treating it as this touching. If you maneuver this equation, that is how we are coming up with this multiplication across, right? So this is the pattern. The pattern is is that if they're on the same shaft, you make them the same. If they connect, you take the new gear, which would be uh, this connection right here, which would be driven uh, drive driver over driven. 5 over 6, uh, what did I change? Oh, it's this. You do 5 over 6, and then you multiply it by the previous one. So this is the pattern. The pattern is is exactly that. So you do this for most questions. And so if you look at this top part, uh, where's it at? Right here. It is N5 over N6, N3 over N4, W2R, which is written right up there. All right, that makes some bit of sense, hopefully. Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. So let me get rid of that. And then the last one, so you guys are probably wondering, why is the arm just a zero? Uh, because when we first did this, uh, let me go ahead and do this. It's because we did it under the condition that the arm was fixed, right? So therefore, how would you represent the speed of the arm if it is fixed? It would be nothing, right? Because it's fixed. It has to be zero if it's fixed, correct? Does that make sense? I feel like there's a drinking game out there that every time I ask, does that make sense? No, there's not. Okay. Well, apparently I'm on Reddit Shit, now, I so... Wish. Yeah, I bet you, I bet you do. <laughs> anyway. So, moving on. So now we have completed the first row here, right? Completed the first row. So now let's move to the second row. The second row here is, is that we lock the gears. So the gears are locked, but the arm is still able to rotate. And let me turn this off for a second. And a fan blowing on me, it's annoying. All right, so gears locked and the arm rotates. So let's find where they talk about that. So right here, actually this does a really good job of explaining it. So right here, uh, it's this part right here. So that last step, it's N5 over N6 times the opposite of three, or it's the opposite of N5 over N6 times the opposite of N3 over N4 times omega 2R. And basically they just maneuver this equation to get it to where omega 6R from that first equation, uh, the one that we used like last Tuesday, it's N5 over N6. Because remember you can represent it in terms of gear teeth. So they just said that Omega 6R is equal to this multiplication, right? This part. So I'm, like I said, if you, if you go through the actual, it doesn't do a very good job of like explaining each step down the way, but if you take a little bit of time and read the derivation, it, it makes sense. All right, so that says, in the column under the heading arm, insert zero, since this row corresponds to the arm being fixed. So we already did that. And it says, in the next row, we need to add the effect of arm rotation. Therefore, in this row, we lock all gears to the arm and allow the arm to rotate at W arm. As a result, all gears will have the same speed W arm. 
as shown in the second row of the table. So let me go ahead and show you that. So gears locked and arm rotates. So W arm, they all have W arm. And this right here is very typical. For most questions, the second row, if there's an arm, will all have arm in it. It will just be straight arms all the way across. And that is simply because we locked all the gears and we allowed the arm to rotate. So that means the gears don't move, but the arm moves. Therefore, they all have to have the same speed because your, the relative speed is essentially it's uh, the speed of the arm minus the speed of the gear, which would be the speed of the gear all zero. Therefore, they all have the same speed. Does that make sense? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I know that you're the you're the official yes person. So I wait until you say something. Okay. All right. The yes, the yes man, yes woman. I don't know. I've never heard of that one. So, here we go. And now it says, uh, in the third, okay, wait a minute. So as a result, all gears have the same speed as shown in the second row. So basically write the second row in as all W arms. Now here's where it gets interesting. So it says, so the third row has the angular speeds of various gears and the arm. So right here, this is W2, W3, W4, W5, W6, and W arm, right? So, this is uh, where things get interesting. It says that, note that gear six is stationary, fixed. Uh, one sec, I can't get back to the picture here. So, let me see. This is something that I've had problems with because I could never find it explained. Is Pradeep in here? Of course not. So, I'm gonna ask the audience here. Can someone tell me why gear six, I guess it's, why is gear six, six fixed is that just because of like this connection it's connected in between this arm so it can't move anywhere well if it looks like the arm can only go along the horizontal axis so yeah. if the gear is i mean that makes sense since the yeah. arm can only move horizontally why would the gear be able to move any other way besides left and right yeah that that's that was my thought but the thing is is that it's never actually explained that so i i assume that's the reason why right it's because it can't move anywhere besides staying on this point right it can't except move left and right and dean yeah. the uh, lecture notes will be put online i just haven't done them yet they will be put on there though so sorry about that uh now i have the discord open so i can actually see it so if we assume that gear six is fixed, right? It says we must ensure that the angular speed of gear six is zero. So it says we find gear six is zero as that by that assumption. And if we move over here, so this is what they've done. Essentially they did gear or angular uh, velocity of six is zero. So therefore, they multiply down. So how this are they add down? So they take this n5 uh, over n6 times n3 over n4 times w2r plus omega arm uh, is equal to w6, but it's equal to zero, right? Because of that assumption. So all of these right here. So like for example, if I ask you to find uh, the the equation of uh, gear four, you just take this, add it to this, and set it equal to four. That's what the actual equation is. So this table is a way of you just adding downwards. So you take this, add it to this, get to that. But there's another trick to this uh, next part. So, but this is, it's really straightforward. You just add these together as we move down the table. So they have that equation. So this is the equation for six, N5, N4, you know, that one, plus omega arm equals zero. And then it says substitute for omega 2R and omega arm. So if you recall, let me get out my handy dandy drawing here. If you recall, omega 2r was equal to what? It is the relative speed of 2 with respect to the arm, right? So essentially, okay. it's omega 2 minus omega arm. So they've just put it into here. Instead of having omega 2r, they just put the original definition back in. Does that make sense? Take another drink. Why would they do that, though? It, you'll, it'll explain here in a second why they've done it. Okay. 
So, well, they probably won't explain it, but hopefully I'll have a good explanation for you. So our goal here is we're trying to find a representation of omega arm. And the reason why we're trying to find that is, is because if you try to find any of these definitions, you will always have what in the equation? You'll always have, so you're, what you're saying is they do that because they want the arm in all the equations? Well, no, we want to find how to get rid of the arm part because oh. the, we, we don't have a way of representing it to solve for anything right now because omega arm is not in terms of anything else. It's only in terms of omega arm, and we need to get it in terms of other ends, which is how we get this, which is why the importance of this part right here. So let me back up really fast and show you that. So right here, they've just they've replaced in this and put it in here. So then if you distribute all these things out, you know, and you do the algebra, uh, essentially what you'll end up with is you'll end up with this now. Uh, this usually comes with, so this is why I, I had friends that I had to teach this to back whenever they were in the class, and it wasn't that they didn't know how to do the gear part. The algebra confused them, and they didn't know how to get the ending part because of algebra. In this part of the class, there is a lot of, like, uh, pulling out things that are, like, common terms, like, you know, factoring. There's a lot of that, so you have to be very confident in your ability to do that. Uh, but essentially, this is kind of an easier one. We're engineers. Why are they making us do algebra in our senior, cl <laughs> in our senior classes? Yeah, I know, right? How dare they make sure everyone has a strong background of math? <laughs> so, right here, this right here is Al. I'm gonna fucking spell this wrong. No, I'm not. We're we're good. We're good, right? Hopefully, algebra. So, essentially, do the algebra. Get omega arm by itself. And once you get omega arm by itself, you will now have a method of plugging omega arm into all the other equations up here, right? So that is the importance of having that. Because if I asked you to find, let's say, the, the angular velocity equation of gear 4, you, I said, but usually the question says, find the angular velocity equation of gear 4 in terms of the input and this... Uh, the other gears so don't ask don't basically not in terms of the arm so you have to find that this part right here so you have to find that so has everybody got this one they kind of know where we're getting it do the algebra get to this part now let's mm -hmm. take a step down so this right here is the table that you've been seeing because i took a picture of it so now it says once you found the speed of the arm like uh as the terms of uh other things you can now proceed with finding other angular speeds of other gears so if you use summation of rows one and two for gear four which is what i was talking about so if you do this so if you take this and add it to that you get uh this right here right does that make sense you get this when you add these two rows or these two uh rows together yeah then you do the exact same thing they did before. They replugged in that definition right here because they want uh, omega arm in the equation because we now have a way of solving for omega arm, right? Does that make sense? Because if we left it as 2r here, uh, 2r is not something that we found in terms of other things. But if you expand it, we have found omega arm, right? This is something we have found. So yeah. we can change that. So... Okay. Once again, they made that transformation right here, and they added this, kept that part there. And then we now have omega 4 is equal to the opposite of N3 over N4 times W2 plus N3 over N4 plus 1 omega arm. So what they did here was they factored it out. Uh, essentially, they, they multiplied in on both of these, right? So you would get uh, negative N3. Let's see if I can do this without taking up so much space. Uh, W2. And then it's, this will be, yeah, negative. And then this will be plus uh, N3 over N4. N4 times W arm uh, plus W arm again, right? 
and then what they did was they so this part stays the same right we don't have any factors to take out of this one so that one remains but if you take a if you take a w arm out of this one you end up with n3 over n4 plus one because we took a w arm out of it and then you pull it out of the outside right but i know I'm, i know i'm explaining algebra but that is very important that you kind of get how that worked right does that make sense yeah okay so that is that is the trick that was the hardest part that my friends like although i've never claimed that the two friends i was explaining to are the uh the pinnacle of trying hard in engineering i would never make that claim but they still couldn't do it so i had to get up the old whiteboard and show them so right here is our final equation but if you've noticed what do we still have in here we still have an omega arm so zach since you are one of the few people that talk tell me what we should do since we have omega arm in here you plug in the equation you found using gear six yes so if you do that you end up with that i see why algebra is so important now yes you end up with that and that right there is a rep representation of uh, the velocity of gear four only in terms of gear teeth and the input velocity, which we all know, right? If we're putting in some sort of input velocity, we know what it is. So that is why it's important is because we know how fast gear four is going to move only knowing the gear teeth and the input speed. Is that good? Yeah. And that is the whole point of this. It's essentially you're trying to represent each gear in terms of only gear teeth and the input that is that is all you want you do not want anything else or else you cannot solve it right hopefully that makes sense you guys just missed it i almost was going to respond and ask a question and then my niece went screaming through the house and i didn't want you guys to hear that thank you I didn't want to hear it either. Yeah, and now I forgot what my question was, so maybe it'll come back to me. Okay. Hopefully it won't be too far down the line. If it is, if I'm doing the homework and it pops back up, I'll just ask. Yeah, you, you know where to find me. Always here. So, this right here is the second question right here. So this is example one. This is the one I was going to have you guys, uh, well, we were just going to do it, and I was going to ask people to tell me what the answer was. And it's good because guess what? I have a table for that right here. So this is for our question right here. So we are going to try and do this one in the next, I don't know, 15 minutes. Uh, if not though, we'll try and hurry. We'll try and speed through it. How about that? So it says, consider the gear train of figure 19. Gear A drives the gear train and the arm is the output. Obtain angular velocity of each gear in terms of their input angular velocity. Find the kinematic coefficient of the gear. So we're going to focus more on this part right here, but not each gear. We're just going to do one of them because if you can do one, I'm hoping you can do the other, right? Since they all follow the same process. So uh, let's start then. So right here is gear A, right? So gear A is our input. So uh, if we do arm fixed, like we did the last time, what would we put here? W2R. W2R, but remember, we are A now. AR. So, AR, correct. So, I'm going to try and do this as best as possible. War. <laughs> so, we are war with A. So, WAR is our very first one. Does that make sense to people? I'm going to try and write that a little better in the middle. I didn't spring for the text tool, unfortunately. So, all right, they don't pay me enough. Although my Donald dollars probably came in, right? Yeah. How, how, do you guys get those or no? Uh, yes, so. Sir. Did you really? Hell yeah, brother. I was gonna say I got them, but they deposited it in my ex-husband's account, so that was a fun conversation yesterday. Oh, like, hey, give me my money. <laughs> no, so he called me and he was like, "Hey, I got this. Uh, did you file your taxes?" Yeah, I was like, "No." He's like, "Cool, thanks. I'm just gonna keep it." Yikes. Yeah, so that was fun to deal with yesterday. All right. So beyond that. Uh conversation about don dollars so here we have w a r right 
Now you guys are probably wondering what we have B prime and C prime. Don't worry about that. And the reason why you don't worry about it is because if we solve for B using A's input, what is B prime? It's the exact same. It is because essentially if you're, if A is driving B, it's also driving B prime and they're moving at the exact same rate essentially. Right. Yeah. So therefore, I mean, isn't, can't you just consider them symmetrical? I mean, yes, since they are. Else, yeah. Since nothing else is touching them. Like if there was something touching just C prime, then it wouldn't be symmetrical. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, how they explain it in the book is they said that B prime and C prime only exist to offset the amount of like uh, force on the machine to make them equal on both sides. So they don't, it doesn't like move and start vibrating and stuff like that. That's how they explain it in the text. So that does make sense okay. to me. Yeah. It makes sense to me. Uh, I don't know about you, but it, it, that I does make that, sense. Uh, dash line also kind of show that it's the same on both sides. Isn't that what that means? Yeah. It's symmetrical. So yes, we we'll just use that. All right, so now let's start with B. Move to B then. So, whoa. I'm about to actually put that in in real text. That sucks. Oh, well. So let's do W. I hope you guys, uh, never mind, I can do a subscript. AR. Cool. So now let's move to B. So B is meshing with A, right? So right here. Does that make sense? So B is meshing with A on an external contact. So how would we do this one? Negative NA over NB times WAR. Negative NA. I'll do a subscript. I'm going to make it nice for you guys. And then, although I'm not doing a equation tool, you guys don't get that. I was going to say, it would probably be easier. Yeah, I know, but it'd take a little longer because as you can see, the top of my screen is very jumbled here. But, oh. yeah, nope. Uh, and what what'd you say it would be? WAR. W. Get rid of that. W A R. I agree. So essentially in in opposite of N A divided by N B, which is the number of gear teeth on A divided by the number of gear teeth on B times A or W A R, which is our initial input uh, with respect to the arm. Right? Cool. Now let's move on to C. So if we look at C here, what do you notice about C? Which is this gear? It's attached to B. It is attached like, to B. Not through an arm or a shaft, but like legit t attached to B. Yes, it's well. Th I think I think this is. They would call this a shaft. I I, I would guess that's what they mean by it. Uh, I think this picture is just different than other ones. But essentially, yes, it's attached to it. So what does that mean? Same velocity. Same velocity. Yeah. Yay. At least I believe so. Watch, we get to the end and I'm just fucking horribly wrong. <laughs> it won't be the first time. And it won't be the last time. <laughs> so, in subscript B. And times. No. W. A. R. Ah, shit. There it is. Cool. I'm actually going to make sure that's right real fast. Let me go down here. Yep, it's right. Cool. All right. So the next one. This one is the next attachment, which is C to D here, right? You see that? C to D. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So, so how would we do that one? Um... Oh, we have Sam typing in here. NC over ND times negative NA over NB WAR. So you said the opposite of N. Uh, you said C over D. Yeah. Yeah, NC. And yes, Sam, I see. I see your question. I get it. But this ain't no fairy tale world. So, uh, A. No. N. B. Although this should be positive, right? No? Well, I just said, like, 
both are negative, so they they turn positive. Okay, yeah, so let's get rid of that then. My bad. Uh, and it's times what? W A R. W A R. Cool. Nope, that doesn't work. Anyway, so. Now let's see if that's right. I'm fairly certain in it. Although it says negative still. I wonder why. Oh. Oh, it's because it's in internal contact. That must be it. Yeah, they said it's uh, internal contact here. Which, by the way, I can't... Does anybody see how you could tell it's internal contact? I think, Oh, I know how. Never mind. Okay, I'm fucking dumb. Uh, it's because this thing is spinning around like this. And it's on the inside of it. This big one is D. So it's internal contact. So if it's internal contact, we all know that it is not a change in sign, right? Remember we did this with the rolling contact tool? Or the rolling contact equation? Yep. Yeah, so that's why. This is spinning on the outside of it. And since C is on the inside, it's internal contact. Sorry, I, I should have saw that. So... That means one of these should still be negative, and I will go ahead and put that there. And let's go ahead and make that smaller. There it is. Excuse me. All right, and so what about the last one here? Get out of here. Yes, what about the last one? Remember, what condition did we use? It'd be zero, right? It would be zero, correct. Big zero. So, big zero. Let's move to gears locked. So, if the gears are all locked and the arm is the only thing is spinning, what should be here? Um, omega. Want to say omega? Well, no. I don't know. Omega A, maybe? Omega. Arm. Or does it have arm. to be? Arm. Because it is the relative speed of the arm. That is the only thing left in that equation. And the reason being is because, uh, let's say we did uh, gears lock. So it's W2. Uh, it, well, let's just do it the other way, just for simplicity. So W arm minus W2 is equal to WAR, right? If you recall. Uh, if gears are locked, that means that W2 is zero because they're not moving. Therefore, how we represent the speed of A is just the arm speed, right? The relative speed of A is just the arm speed. So it, it works for all of them. It's the same for every one of them because gears are locked. So let me go ahead and write this one out. So W, A, arm, and then I'm going to copy pasta this right over. At least I'm fairly certain that's how it is. And we will check that. I'm fairly certain. Yep, it is. Cool. So, now let's head back. So, now we have the resultant. So, the resultant is, remember, the addition of all of them in the last step. And we're, uh, we're going to, I'm just going to go ahead and put uh, omega 2 here. And omega 3 and omega 4. But, remember, those resultants are the... Uh, Oh, not three, Ugh, B. They are the result of you doing the uh, like addition of equations and and simplifying, right? If you guys recall. But I'm just going to put them down here because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for all of these. Um, and then W, D. Oh my god, I'm going to fucking go nuts. All right. And then the last one is W arm. Cool. So now, you remember how on, we, on the last one we solved that question based on what? How how were we able to find one of the gears in terms of the W arm? How are we supposed? How how did we do that on the previous question? So let me go back here. What? The arm had one gear locked in place, so yes. we knew that it had to be zero. So which one on here is locked in place? Locked in on figure 17? On figure, on figure 19. That's my uh -oh. bad. Locked in place? Wouldn't it be A? So no. Is not A. C? C. C? 
Right? Isn't did you say like D's like spinning around C, so like C would just have to chill there? Let me see. Are they actually spinning though? Because it looks like the arm and A are going left and right see. again. Okay, so it's not okay. That maybe my uh so let me go back to this. So this part that explanation was really shit. It's not so it's not that it's spinning around it, it's just that the gear connection from C to D is on the inside of D, right? Essentially, it's creeped over it, and so therefore it's internal contact. That's sort of what that means. So, but for this one, I, gonna, I think it's I think D. I got another guess then. I think it's D, but I don't remember. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. So they said since gear D is fixed, and I know I told you that I'm really bad at figuring out why it was fixed, I can only assume the reason why it was fixed is because it's directly contacted, and they show you these lines right here that it's like not moving. Oh, uh, that makes sense. I, that's but that, I think that's the is that is that make sense? I don't know if someone has a better idea of like why it's fixed Please tell me because I, I it took me a little bit to figure out like I see the picture here, but Yeah, I couldn't tell you I think that's it though Anybody Why wouldn't a be fixed then too that has the bars as well on it? Yeah, so I think it's yeah a has a shaft on it, and it's a is this part right here. This is the gear a that's connected to this shaft, and the shaft uh is so just spinning if, it. If it's a shaft, why why wouldn't they change the color of the shaft if it has nothing to do? Like obviously it touches a, but like if they're trying to show that it's a shaft and not an actual part of a, it should be technically be a different color. Because, like, in exam in figure 17, the shafts are different colors. You know, like, that's, if we're basing our answers off of pictures, like, they need, to have, they need to have actual pictures, like, accurate pictures. Yeah, look, the shafts are different. Okay, different yeah, they're just not colored in on this one. Okay, I agree with you. I agree. It should be better. But, hey, I didn't make this shit, all right? <laughs> so. It's not Victoria approved. It isn't. I'm sorry. I don't know what to deal with. I don't know how to deal with that. So, but we'll just say because it's on a shaft here, it goes here. It is D for this one. Like I said, I think is just because they drew these little lines here. I think that is only it. I think that shows you that it's fixed. And like I said, in all other problems, that usually shows you what's fixed. And I think the the only other two things on here that are that are fixed are shafts, right? Yeah, okay. I I see that picture that you've shown it from the like uh front side of it. So, I guess that that's that's the only thing I could say is look out for these and if these num these are also on a shaft, then you don't count those because the shaft is only spinning, right? It's not uh it's not a gear. And we're talking about gears here, I guess. So that that would be my like I said, it's never actually explained, so unfortunately I have no other way of <laughs> helping you there. So right here, we treat D as it's fixed, right? So that means that WD is equal to zero because we're just going to treat as fixed. That means we get rid of this. WD is equal to zero. Therefore, since WD is equal to zero, we can now go through our long chain of trying to figure out how to uh, get these two to like get W arm by itself, right? And so if we do that, we're going to start right here. Since WD is equal to zero, if you if you multiply down this page or add down this page, you get NC over ND and times NA over NB times WAR plus WR because we took this and added to this. So this to this, right? And we add. And since it's equal to zero, now we can actually get through this pretty easily because then, once again, Victoria, we took AR and we spread it apart, right? So it was W A minus W uh, arm. So okay. we did we we spread it. We basically we uh, well, what's not that's not the right word. You expanded it, expanded it apart to its original definition, and that's what we have here, right? And then we did the same thing we did to the last one. You multiply it out and you try and get W arm by itself, and they have done so in the exact same way, just using algebra and like uh, so. Uh, just multiplying across and also uh, doing factoring. And you can get it by itself, which is W-A-R-M here. 
Okay. W arm. W A arm. <laughs> anyway. So we've gotten it by itself, which is this equation right here. Right? Right. So now that we've done that, the original question asked us to find every single one of them in terms of that. But we're, we're only going to do, uh, let's do C. Although they are the exact same because C equals D, right? Because they're connected by a shaft. So let's just do C. So if we were going to do C, uh, we're going to put it right here. No, man, there's nowhere to hide this. Paint 3D, no. Anyway, so essentially what they've done here, just so we can move on, WB equals WC because they're on the same shaft. And they took that equation uh, right here. And they added them down the page like normal. And that is how you end up with, uh, where'd they do it at? Hmm. Oh, they didn't show the same like multiple steps as the one up before. They actually skipped a few, it looks like. Uh, I think. Oh, they haven't added it yet. Oh, yeah, they, they didn't do the one like on the previous example. So essentially, they like skipped a step and they finally added it over here. Uh, but essentially, if you follow through the exact same steps as before, so if you add these together, right, uh, and then you miss, uh, you input what W arm equaled, you'll get uh, something like this. And like this, through some further uh, reduction. So basically, the steps are, uh, one sec, let me go ahead and do this. So one table. So you fill it out in terms of ends, ends, and uh, W's, right? Probably W2 because it's the input. And then you do two, find the stationary gear, the stationary gear. And then three, solve for W arm and then four find W N. So that when I say W N I mean that's the equation for W for any one of the gears, right? Or omega N. Uh using substitution. Right? using substitution. And that is how you find one for each one of them. And now I think on the homework, we'll ask you for specific ones. So like, it'll always be like, find WB using substitution or find WB using the definition of WARM or uh, WARM. But it could find you, it could ask you to find all of them. But the thing is, is that some of these, like once you found C, you found B, once you found, I mean, they're really fast. So uh, once you fill out the table and get W uh, arm, the rest of it falls over really quick. So I don't know. I haven't looked and see what per, me and Pradeep are going to you know, cook up for you. But they should all be the exact same thing like this. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So basically, our, so is it like the last chapter where we get this table and there's supposed to maybe be a matrix or are these actually solvable? No, there is no there is no matrix like this one, this chapter, nothing okay. like that. Uh, you're just gonna find an equation, and they they are solvable if you knew the input. Uh, but there's the last part right here. So it says the kinematic coefficient. So if you remember the original part of this question asked for the kinematic coefficients and the equations. So what the kinematic coefficient means is is that so this is the kinematic coefficient of the arm, right? And so what you do is you go up to the arm equation which is here, right? See this? The co kinematic coefficient of the arm is just this. It's whatever is uh, multiplying omega a on this equation for arm. So that's, and it's for the same for all. So if you wanted to find the kinematic coefficient of uh, like, I don't know, let's say b, the kinematic coefficient of b is just this whole thing, which I think they show you that in a second. 
Uh, yes, right here. So, the kinematic coefficient. So there, there's another step. There's a, you know an ad, added one. The last step is when they ask you for kinematic coefficient. All you do is you go to your original equation that you found for like h arm or h b or h c or h a, and you just take the coefficient of whatever is on omega a or whatever the input is omega two omega a whatever it is. You take that and you say that's the kinematic coefficient. So for example here. The omega arm equation is right here. This is omega a, so you just take the coefficient, which is this right here, and that is your kinematic coefficient. So if you remember, we've these last couple chapters we've done nothing but kinematic coefficients, right? This yep. is another kinematic coefficient chapter. Essentially, you you find it a different way, but we've now found it here. And the reason why we can find it here is because remember this whole chapter is also based on instant centers as well and uh, the rolling contact equation. So we found the kinematic coefficient here using a different method. And so uh, that means essentially think of it like uh, the instant centers and the equation solving, the force now, all that stuff. It's another kinematic coefficient finding it at the end. And here we are. So coefficient of each one of them. I don't think it'll ask you for each one. It'll probably just say find H3. And then you would just take the coefficient of H3, or that equation for H3. Does that make sense? I hope this has been... I'm going to post this probably in a little bit. Uh, actually, probably right after this. So hopefully we've all got this to some degree, right? I can also post this if you want. Uh, would that help anybody? That would yes. be perfect. Yeah. Cool. I'll post all the notes. I'll post the, this document and the video, and hopefully that makes sense. Uh, hopefully we can all get through that. Is that Appreciate good? It. All right. Yeah, uh, I'm, but before anyone leaves, I'm about to go ahead and take a picture of the chat or the uh, of the Discord. Uh, let me see. See if I can get everybody in it. I don't think I'll be able to. I see Abdul at the top, but. Can you switch to uh, the kinematic coefficient really quick, please? Uh, what do you mean? Switch to it. Like, go back to where that was. I don't know, like, in the slides. Yeah, I will. The equation. Tendence 416. And then one more time. So it stopped at max, and now we're back at Nathan. Attendance 416, part two. All right, cool. So I now have the attendance for today. So uh, you were asking for, go back to the notes, I shall, right here. So what did you need to see about it? No, that's it. I just wanted to finish writing. Okay. So I'm going to go post this, uh, the video, and all that stuff. Use that to your advantage and do the homework. I'll have Pradeep post it probably by tonight, I imagine. And if and you have any, due next Thursday. it'll be due next Thursday and your exam will be that following Tuesday. Uh, if there's any like delays, it'll be Thursday. We could just Sounds make it good. Thursday. It doesn't even matter, honestly, at this point, but <laughs> uh, we all good then? Yep. Wonderful. All right, guys, thanks for coming today. Stay safe out there or in there, I mean. Have a good one. Yep. Peace, guys. Peace. I'm going to go ahead and post this while I'm still in here. Let me do that. So n exam not next Tuesday. Uh, no. No exam next Tuesday. Let me go ahead and open this. And just so I recall, just so I remember to do this. Let me stop this. Oh, I have to stop this. We're going to fill with a bunch of bullshit.